Cicadas are starting to descend on the triangle. They're not really descending, are they? They're kind of they're coming up from underneath. They're, they're in the ground. They're emerging, we should say. This, this marks a rare occurrence in the U.S. where two broods of 13 and 17 year cicadas are emerging at the same time. The last time that this happened was when Thomas Jefferson was president. Well, here we are. It's historic times. WRL climate change reporter Liz McLaughlin joins us live to tell us what we can expect as they continue to come up into our lives. Well, Dan, the type of cicadas that we'll see across North Carolina are a 13-year species. Uh, you may hear them before you see them, a mating call as loud as a lawnmower that will start taking over the triangle. Many are molting now, and so you may see shells that start to accumulate on the sides of trees. After more than a decade underground, the cicadas emerge when the soil reaches about 64 degrees, a phenomenon that experts say could start sooner as temperatures get warmer. With climate change, in a warmer spring, in a warmer year, they're going to start coming out a little bit earlier than they might have in past emergences. So that's something certainly we see um, in other insects, like annual insects, just like the timing of butterflies and moths and, um, and caterpillars, things like that, is that that timing is very dictated by temperature. The peak is usually in mid-May, but now the experts expect the peak in early May. All right, so let's talk about this uh, cicada invasion for just a moment. You're holding some right now. Uh, these creep people out. There's, they're not, they can't hurt you. They don't bite, they don't sting, nothing like that, right? That's right. They're non-toxic too, so if your dog or cat eats a couple, it's okay. Uh, kids, and they're actually pretty docile compared to right. the ones that come out every summer. So, you know, they don't really move that much, so they're really easy to pick up and, um, you know, just take a look at them. And I have a couple of, of those exoskeletons in here too, those shells you'll start to see on the trees. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we talk about the dogs might eat them, cats might, a lot, I assume a lot of animals, birds and things like that might kind of feast on them as they come out as well. I, I, I saw a couple of reports that were interesting about copperheads, about, well, there might be more snakes looking to, to eat them. Is that true? I asked a couple of professors about this and they say that's a little blown out of proportion. It's true that this is a protein buffet for all sorts of animals, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, squirrels, birds. Um, and snakes do like them, but it's not going to be, it's, it's going to be a rare occurrence, you know, not any more so than you might run into one taking a hike. But these are a very, uh, you know, attractive food source for snakes, including copperheads. It's just like we eat fast food. It's an easy, okay. <laughs> easy food to get that's yeah. a lot of bang for your buck. I didn't know that snakes liked bite-sized food, but um, I also didn't know that people will eat these. I'm can you explain that a little bit? So they are edible, and there's a lot of <laughs> recipes emerging online. There's a museum in New Orleans that's offering a salad that has uh, fried cicadas as oh, a boy. crunchy little topper. Yeah. Um, you may have, I don't know if you've tried crickets before. You kind of see those in some candy stores and novelty things right. um, around the country. But yeah, in, in um, Africa, Mexico, other countries, it's part of the cuisine. Hey, you fry it, dip it in chocolate, you eat just about anything. Liz, thank you.